going to tell you how I turned a blanket from Facebook Marketplace into a jacket. The pattern I picked out is from something called the Lutterlow Kit. Um, I purchased it after a recommendation from With Wendy here on YouTube. The kit is cool because it comes with lots of different patterns in this book, and then you blow them up to your size based on your own measurements. So you don't have to keep a ton of pattern pieces around that you're never going to use. You just make the ones that you need. My cat was really helpful in this process, as you can see. I traced the pattern pieces onto tracing paper, and then I had to take apart some of the blanket and some of the uh, pillowcase that it came with and iron them in order to use them for pieces that didn't need padding. So I did this for the pockets on the outside and the two pieces of facing and the collar facing um, in order to have an inner part of the jacket match with the outer part of the jacket. Um, so then I cut out most of my major pieces from the blanket itself. Here you can see it. It has a really nice lining on the other side, so I didn't I didn't worry too much about making all of the lining match because I kind of liked it. Okay, what I'm showing you here is that I'm using magnets to um, put the seam allowance into my cutting without having to mark it separately. Please enjoy Isaac in the background snacking on something. I don't know what they're eating, but damn, they are cute. And I'm going to cut out my pockets and show them to you in just a second. Pockets. Before I started sewing, I had to make sure that the facings would sit correctly on the fronts of the jacket. Uh, so here I am just checking that. And then I sewed all of the raw edges on the facings before attaching them. Okay, so what I just did was I took the facing and I folded down the edge that'll be exposed twice and also the bottom hem and I brought the hem up a little higher than the seam allowance um, you can actually see the seam allowance the blue dots like right there baby are you helping baby tell me how helpful you are how helpful are you Okay, so I've now done the, um, the finishing on both uh, facings, and I've already sewn one facing into the jacket, so I'll show you how that works and then we'll do the other one. So, for, so, so here you can see the front of the jacket, and then the facing is sewn in here. So you can see that everything is enclosed and there's a row of top stitching holding it down. So when the jacket is on, if you were to turn it, um, you would still see the same pattern. Okay, enough kitty kisses, back to sewing. When you sew curved pieces, there's often a lot of extra fabric on the wrong sides that has to be cut, and I'm gonna show you in one second how you deal with that. Um, you often have to fold things down and then sew on top of them to keep them down. So here I am showing you that when you have the wrong sides out, there's a lot of extra fabric there, and if you don't cut it, you won't be able to turn it around right, it won't sit right. And then even after you do that, to make everything sit nicely, you have to put extra stitching to keep it all in place, and that's what the top stitching is for. So I'll just point out where I have to top stitch and keep it down, and I hope that will make sense. Right along this curve, you need top stitching. Both of the front facings are done, and so you can see it's gonna sit like this, and like this. It's definitely very big, which I think is okay because my goal was to feel like I was wrapped up in a blanket, and when it's unbuttoned, it'll just be like, cozy. <laughs> And back to sewing. Gotta sew the backs to the fronts and along the shoulders in order to try it on. I forgot to put my pockets on the side seam because I was so excited about putting on the vest. Um, so I need to do that tomorrow and I like to flat fell even my pocket seams if possible or French seam them 
and there's like a tutorial that I need to try about how to do it. So I'm gonna try that tomorrow and I'll also link to it in the description. Today we're gonna finish setting in the inseam pocket for my jacket. So inseam pockets are different than the ones I showed you when I cut them out. They are set into the side seam and it involves taking two pieces and sewing one to the front and one to the back within the seam that connects the front to the back and then sewing down the rest of the seam. And then if you wanna hide your seams, it's even more complicated than that. So what I'm doing here is that I've inset one pocket piece into the front of the jacket and I've made a notch, and then I'm aligning the back pocket piece with the other pocket piece before I sew anything else. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the top of the pocket or the part that'll be closest to the uh, front of the jacket and I've set it in with a notch and then I've also sewed the back of the pocket onto it here and I know this looks wrong um, it kind of is so but it'll it'll all come out right so then when the pocket is turned right side out um, the pretty part is on the inside so it folds down like that and then everything here will just get taken into that seam so the reason that you have to do this notch is so that you can do a straight seam here like that and capture this raw edge and be able to fold it down and either do a french seam or what's called a flat fell seam. I think I'm maybe gonna do a French seam on this. And then there will be no exposed raw edges. The other thing I need to do before I do that is that I need to put another seam around this here. And that way, this raw edge right here will be also enclosed. And since I didn't show it on the first pocket, here I am doing the second pocket on the other side. I sewed one piece to the side seam, made a notch, cut it out, and then I'm gonna do a row of top stitching around this after flipping it in so that it all stays in place. So if you fold that down and don't do a row of top stitching, you can see it wants to come back, um, that wants to come back from under. And then with the top stitching in, it all stays down. Once the pockets were inset and the side seams were finished, I tried the jacket on for size. I had sewed the tops together along the shoulders, but with the seams exposed on the top because I intended to French seam them, which is where you do a second uh, set of stitching to, to hide it. So you can see that's after I did the second set of stitching. Um, and you can see the pockets were laying nice and flat and I was really happy about that. When I was satisfied that the pockets were laying well and that the seams were in the right places and everything, it was time to do the collar. So I had cut out one side of the collar from the blanket with batting in the middle and one from the pillowcase that I had so that I could have the pattern be the same on both sides. And I noticed that I had cut them with slightly different sizing. So I had to adjust that by making another seam. It took a little finagling, but I got it all worked out and I started on the sleeves. I'll show you both the sleeves and the collar in the next part when I try the whole thing on. So the sleeves, when I first cut it out, I noticed that they were too tight, which is to say the seam came up too high on the side. Thankfully, I had waited to actually cut out the sleeve fabric and I ended up cutting out about four extra inches because I wanted the sleeves to be nice and wide and poofy. I did not want to be uncomfortable wearing a sweater under this jacket. I haven't made that many sleeved garments before. I've made some like relatively short sleeved things and some pants and stuff like that. And I had kind of forgotten that sleeves are very challenging to flat fell because you have to do a second seam when they're already enclosed. So I learned this the hard way, but you should do a French seam on sleeves if you want to enclose the seam. So if you, like me, don't like having any raw edges on your finished product, you should definitely do a French seam instead of trying to flat fell your sleeve seams. Just a word from someone who did one flat fell seam and then was like, I'm never gonna try to do that again. 
Here I am trying it on. The collar was popped up, so I had to fold it down to make sure it would look right. And then one sleeve is on, and as I tried it on, I thought it was probably a little bit too long, maybe like two or three inches too long. And also I decided I wanted a cuff to bring all of that volume in the sleeve down so that it was nice and tight around the wrist. I was pretty excited about how that had turned out. So to make the cuff piece, since it was not in the pattern, I just measured my wrist and added a little bit of ease, and then I cut a rectangle out of the fabric with the batting in between, and I enclosed the uh, raw edges by putting right sides together and cutting, making a regular seam. And then I gathered the edge of the sleeve down using three rows of gathering stitches, so basically just long basting stitches that you pull until you have a gather, and then I inserted it into the cuff and sewed it. And this was really challenging. I didn't really understand how tight this would become in my sewing machine and just how difficult. Um, and I think if I do this again, I will definitely make a um, open cuff that buttons together to enclose around the wrist. And now I know why that's how most sleeves that are not stretchy are made. Um, the last thing to do was to put buttons on. I have this uh, button spacer tool and you uh, spread it out and then it shows you sort of this even spacing for where to put your buttons. It's not quite big enough for this jacket so I had to improvise, um, but yeah that was the last step other than attaching the external pockets um, and I wanted to be able to wear this jacket to an event so I uh, did the buttons before I did the pockets and wore it without the external pockets for the very first time. I then had the pleasure of having my handsome friend Haranya model my jacket for me. I almost think it looks better on him, which is really sad because uh, he can't have it. Yeah, uh, it's mine.